Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at how to fit data with and without error in views. What I've done already is I've loaded up data that is the year and fractional price increase since 1970 for gasoline. And this has errors because we've looked at prices across several different parts of the economy, meaning what the consumer pays, what industry pays, and so on. And so we're reflecting the spread in those prices. And this is what that data looks like. So we just have year, fractional price increase relative to 1970, and then the error associated with that measurement here. We always, in views, indicate error using plus minus in the column to the right of the values that have error. And so if I go back and look at the views file, we see that we have the error associated with that price. Now we're interested in only fitting up to the year 1983. So let's go ahead and in X, I'm actually gonna change this to be uh, no decimal places. And then I'm also going to change the range to go up to 1983. And that will cut this off in half, so let's actually do 1983.5. I don't have to go so high in Y, so let's go ahead then and set this to, it looks like something like 10 might work, maybe even 7. All right, so now I have the data and it's error, and I would like to fit a function to this. So let's just go ahead and say fit. I want this function to be an exponential, so a times exp tau times, and since we're starting at 1970, let's do x minus 1970, and then plus a constant c. Then I need to give those parameter names down here, so let's start with a equals 1, tau equals 1, and c equals 0, just as a guess. And if I click here, you'll see that the guess isn't great, but it's actually probably good enough for views to work. Now, there's a few more things I need to do. Before I point to the data, let's think about how am I going to get this to only fit through 1983? Well, there's two ways to do it, actually three. One is to go into the data, and then in the data, go ahead and make a new column that just runs to 1983, and then import that and fit it. But there's actually other ways to do it in views. So one way we could do this is to go down and say the min fit range is auto, so as low as we want to go, and put in 1983 as the max fit range. That would work, and we've already seen that once in this course, so let's see a different way to do it. One is to just check this button here, fit only range. And by range, it means the X axis. So we're only going to fit the data that spans the values we have for the x-axis, which, as we just changed this to 1983, will be this range. One nice thing about this is if I resize the data or resize the x-axis, I can hit fit and it'll fit to the new data that we have just put in instead of having to change the min and max fit ranges. So let's do that. We have year and fractional relative to 1970 and then fit and there it is, it's not a great fit, so I'm gonna hit it again. That looks pretty good. This is fitting with the errors. The other thing that we might do is fit without the errors. So let's just say with errors, how do we get without errors? There's no easy way to do it inside of views, although it can be done. And so I think the better thing to do is to go back to our data and just copy and paste this. We'll say, just for ease without errors. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm just gonna say without errors. Then without errors doesn't really mean zero. If I put in zero, this isn't gonna work because the way that fitting with errors with views always does is to weight the points by the inverse of the error. So we're gonna divide by whatever number is here and divided by zero doesn't work. So this could be anything, 1, 0.1, it just, it really doesn't matter. But they all need to be the same so that they're all weighted exactly the same. So instead of without errors, we could also say consistent errors. And that's also a fine name if it helps us keep track of what's going on. Now the key point here is that 
I can use the plus minus column the same as I did there. They have the same name because the way views interprets the plus minus column is that this is the error associated with the column to the left. And so I don't have to give them separate names. And in fact, I can't. If I want to indicate error, I have to title this plus minus or just plus if it's positive error or just minus if it's minus error. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and say save. I will go back to views and then refresh the data in views. Now I should have access to a new set of data here called consistent errors. And if I were to plot that instead of the data I started with, what we'll see is that all the errors are now the same size, which is basically what we want because it will fit things weighting them to just those errors. The way we would do that is we would just copy and paste this, but let's give this a name, which is without, uh, maybe not without errors, but how about consistent errors, just to make it clear what we're referring to. Then I would change the Y to the consistent error data, which is what I'm plotting here right now. It doesn't have to be plotted in order to fit to it, but just to see what we're showing. Now when I say fit function, I have a new line, this green line, that more closely fits the points because it's not weighting the ones with lower arrow error more heavily. If I go back to see what it looked like what we were fitting before, we can see that the points down here have a little bit of error and the points up here have much more. And so we're biasing fitting to the points down here, which is why the blue line, which is our line with errors, more closely lies next to those points and can deviate from the points up here, whereas the green splits the difference all the way down. And that's our with consistent errors. And so that's the easiest way to handle fitting with the error bars being different and with them not being different so that we don't weigh the points separately. What we'll do next is look at a video where uh, we'll figure out how to represent error in these ways. But for now, and that's all we really need at this point. And so I will see you in the next video.